Hey guys, it's Aaron. Let's talk layout some more. Uh, I wanted to look at something related to line work inside of SketchUp. So this is actually, again, a newer functionality. 2020.2 gives you the ability to set line scale based on the SketchUp model inside layout. So we're gonna take a look at what that means and how you might play with it right now. Okay. So here I have a model. I just, just let you guys know what I did. I did all the boring stuff. I created a new document. I imported this model window. This is the one and only scene I have in this model and I pulled it in. So there are some things going on here that I want to point out before we dive in. I did intentionally break this model up specifically to get a, an effect with these lines. So over here, if you look, uh, these are the tags that I have in this model. So I have this far mob, far tag, and if I turn that on and off, you can see the two buildings, two trees, and mark down there at the end disappear. The medium is connected to this building tree, this building tree, and Steve. So if I turn that off, that'll go away. And then front, as you may have already guessed, is these two buildings, these two trees, and Laura right here. Then the ground is on its own. So that's how this model's broken up. And I want to do this specifically because I want there's a specific uh, effect we want to get uh, with with what we're going to look at with lines here. So first things first, because I know if I don't say this, you guys are going to do exactly what I did, which means you're going to go in and try to change your line scales and nothing's going to happen because the default fi file import type as it displays this is raster. So first thing you're going to want to do is go to SketchUp model, change from raster into vector or hybrid. In this case, I'm just going to go to vector. Hybrid, of course, will show you all of your raster materials, but draw the lines as vector lines. So I don't have any pretty materials. Mine are all just uh, colors, so pretty simple. Okay, so one of the big things that we have the ability to do now is we can look at and scale our line types by tag over here. So let's take a look at what that means. We're gonna, we're gonna look at this front one. Front is like I was saying, this is Laura, this building tree, building tree right here. So if I come over where it says default, right now, I don't have anything special set to it. So this is of course really nice. If you do have your stuff broken apart based on the order something to be built in or um, different ways you want it to be shown, I want my foundation lines to be dashed, I want utilities to be drawn as dotted lines, that kind of thing. Of course, I can put them on layers and real quickly toggle through different types uh, right here. So this is gonna be, this is obviously a weird way to show this example, but I'm gonna switch it from my default to a dashed style and click OK. And this updates, by the way, when you change your dash type, you can change as much as you want here, but it's not gonna actually apply to the drawing until you click OK. So that's what this would look like if I use dash. Uh, scale here is going to actually control. So right now we're at one scale. So if I come back in here and I change it up to like a four scale and click OK, you'll see, see how big those lines got and the spaces? That's what scale does. I'm pointing that out because what I'm going to end up doing here is playing not with the scale, but with the edge width. And uh, it, that's why there is no scale on a solid line. So if I come in here and create this to switch this over to a solid line, it doesn't matter if I have four scale or 10 X scale, it looks exactly the same. That's just the way solid lines work. All right. So to do this, I'm going to take my front medium and far tags, switch them all to just the default line. And this is, I know this is kind of funny too. If you have default, default's not just the line type. Default is also all these other attributes locked out. So by switching from default to the line type, you get access to the color, scale, and edge width. And then I'm gonna do the same for ground. I'm gonna actually turn that on too. All right, so that's everything. Now, what, I, and this, I gotta give props, of course, I always give credit where I can. This was actually an effect that was shown by Dave Richards on our forum. So he had a, a cabinet where the front had darker lines and then looking into the cabinet, the far back lines were, were more faded, more distant. So we can get that same kind of effect in here with line scaling. So if I go to my dashes for, oops, 
I went the wrong one. So my front, let's see, look at front. Okay, I'm gonna keep my front at just the standard. This looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave that at one, edge width. Then I'm gonna go to my medium, and I'm gonna change that from one to say like a 0.6, and click okay. Now right away, do you see how that got a little bit lighter? See, look at this line's a little bit heavier than this line right here. Let's go to far, and we'll change that down to a 0.4, and click okay. Well, look at that, see, even lighter as I get further away. And then my ground, so this is this ends up looking kind of weird because see my ground lines right here, it's one of the heaviest lines. So I put ground on its own tag so I could come in here and put like maybe a 0.1. So that should just all but disappear down there at the end. Now with that, we see we have our lines get lighter and lighter off into the distance. That's nice. But what if we want to compound the effect? So one of the things we could do, of course, is we could say in our front, we could bring that up a little bit, right? So we could go maybe to 1.5. That looks a little bit heavier in the front. That's almost too heavy, though. Um, so maybe further back, we don't go quite as dark. Now we can play with these layers this way. Oops. Far. Maybe bring far up a little bit so it's not really disappearing. But here's how we can compound that look. So we want to make it even a little more extreme. I don't like that. That front is too heavy. I'll take that back to one. But what we can do is as it starts fading back, we can go to lighter lines and I can go to my medium and change from solid black. Maybe we'll just lighten it up a little bit. We'll just go into like a dark gray color and click OK. So see how, oh, that was, a little goes a long way there, huh? Let's try that again. Let's uh, click that and maybe not quite so light gray, maybe a darker dark gray. Ooh, that's better, I like that. And then we'll go back to this one back here and we'll, we'll adjust the color. It's just even a little, just a, just a touch lighter than that. Yeah, look at that, see how that gets nice and light in the background? So what this does without changing anything, or messing with fog or anything like that. Everything's just as clear. I have the exact same number of lines that I had before. Fog is nice because I can put fog on and have it roll forward and automatically do it for me, but I do lose detail. So eventually fog's gonna gobble this up and I'm gonna lose everything. By setting my line widths and colors this way, the way I just did, I can actually have that look like it fades off just based on putting things into tags and getting those tags to fade off with their line thicknesses and colors. So that was kind of a fun one to play with. Like I said, it came from a very specific example where Dave was showing woodworking and, and it was you know a real short depth of field because something a couple inches back was real thin lines where the heavier ones were up front. But I thought this was kind of a neat look because you're actually looking down a bigger distance. Um, I would love to hear how you guys are using line scaling in the new SketchUp and Layout. Leave a comment down below and let me know of a nice thing that you have found that you leverage that functionality and uh, maybe I'll make a video about it and actually show it and of course give you credit. If you did like this video click like down below and if you haven't already please subscribe. We do several videos a week and you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though please leave a comment like I always say, so much of our content is created from our wonderful viewers like you and you guys telling us what you'd like to see or telling us something cool that you figured out that you want to share with everyone else. Like making these videos a lot, like even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.